Hello, today I will be talking about the basics of polynomials. First, a couple definitions. Um, the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent, and when you're combining like terms, all you have to know is uh, you need the same variables with the same exponents. Alright, so we can start. Uh, just start with the basics. Find the degree of each polynomial. So, we're just looking at the highest exponent. So first let's list the exponent of all of our terms. Here we have an exponent of 2. So that's the degree of just that term. The exponent of this term is 1 since there was nothing up there. So that means the exponent was a 1. And here, since there's no variable, that means that variable would have an exponent of 0. Because we know anything with an exponent of 0 is 1. So whenever it's just a constant, your degree is zero. So the degree of the entire polynomial is the highest exponent, which is two. So two would be our answer. We're just looking at the degree of the highest exponent, or the term with the largest degree. Here, same case. The exponent here is a one, we have 15x cubed, the exponent is a 3, and here the exponent is a 2. So the degree of the polynomial as a whole is 3. Now that can change a little bit. Um, whenever you have multiple letters, what you're doing to find the degree is you add the exponents. So here we have xy, we know both of those exponents are 1's, so the degree of that term is going to be 2. The degree of the second term, which is 3x squared y squared, just sum the exponents, the degree here is 4, so that's the degree of the entire polynomial. Same case here. We have 3m n squared. We know since this is just m, it's m to the first, so our degree is 3. And we have minus 8m to the fourth n cubed, so our exponent is 7, or our degree is 7, and therefore the degree of the entire polynomial would be 7. So remember we are just looking for the term with the highest degree when we're talking about the degree of a polynomial. Alright, next I'll be doing a few examples on combining like terms. Um, so, our first problem, we have x to the fourth plus x squared minus 2x plus 3 times all of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x. So the first thing we want to do is distribute anything we can. Um, here, we have nothing to distribute. So really, we don't even need these parentheses. We can just drop them. This is x to the fourth plus x squared minus 2x. Here, we have to distribute the 3. So that is going to go to all three of the terms in here. And remember, terms are just separated by a plus or a minus. So we have three terms here. Um, so the 3 is multiplying with all of these. So we get plus 3x cubed minus 3 times 2 is 6x squared. Positive 3 times positive 4x is plus 12x. And then from there, you just add like terms. So, we look at our highest degree first. Here we have x to the fourth. So that's just going to stay x to the fourth since there are no other x to the fourth terms in here. Next, we have x cubed. And there are no other x cubed terms in here. So we have plus 3x cubed. That one doesn't change. And then we have all our x squared terms. We only have two. We have an x squared here and an x squared here. So we have x squared minus 6x squared, that's 1 minus 5 is minus 5, or 1 minus 6 is minus 5x squared. And then we have negative 2x, that's the only, um, actually there's, a, there's an x after this 12 here. We have negative 2x plus 12x, which is plus 
10x. And that would be it for that one. The next one is very similar. First, we have to get rid of all the parentheses by distributing, if we can, and then we just add like terms. So here, there's nothing in front, so we just rewrite that, 3x squared minus 4x, plus there's nothing in front of this either, because really it's just a positive 1. If you distribute a 1, it doesn't change anything. So we get 2x minus 3x squared, but the last one does have something in front of it. That negative is going to change things. When you distribute a negative, it's going to flip all your signs. So treat that as multiplying everything by a negative 1. You distribute the negative. So we get minus x squared. Negative, negative x is positive x. And then we have negative 1 at the end. And then we just combine like terms. We have 3x squared terms. 3x squared minus 3x squared. Well, those cancel out. So those go away. And then we have negative x squared. That's going to stay because there's no other x squared terms to combine. Then we have negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x plus x is negative x. And then finally, a negative 1 at the end. So in the end, we get x, negative x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is multiplying polynomials. And the first thing we can do is when we have a single term polynomial times a binomial or even a trinomial, um, we're just distributing whenever we're just multiplying a single term. So just think of it as distributing. So first, for our first example, we have 3x squared times 2x squared minus x. All right, so this 3x squared is going to go to both of these terms. So we distribute 3x squared times 2x squared. Um, when you're doing this, you want to think of the numbers and the letters separately. So we have 3 times 2 is 6, and then we have x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, because we just add the exponents when we're multiplying. And we have 3x squared times negative x. So we have 3 times negative 1 which is negative 3, and then x squared times x to the first power, add the exponents, x squared times x to the first is x cubed. So that would be it for that one. Similar thing happening here. All right, so we have 4, x to the fourth, y cubed, times a set of things in parentheses. And we're going to do the same thing, just distribute first. There's only two terms in here. Remember, term is separated by a plus or a minus sign. So we have 4 times 2 is 8. x to the 4th times x, or x to the 1st, is going to be x to the 5th. y cubed times y cubed is y to the 6th. Next term, we have 4x to the 4th y cubed times negative 3x squared y. So think about the numbers first. We have 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. x to the 4th times x squared is x to the 6th. And then we have y cubed times y is y to the 4th. And that's it for that one. And the last thing I want to talk about is when you're multiplying two polynomials with multiple terms. All right, so here we have two terms times two terms. Usually when people are doing these, they think to FOIL, all right? So that's pretty much what you're doing for this one. You're FOILing. And when you FOIL, you think first, first times the first, outer, um, first one in this one times the last one in this one, inner, which are these two, and then multiply the last. And then you add them all up. But I think a better way to think about this is to just distribute each term that you have in the first set. So we have to distribute the x. x times 2x is going to be, well, 1 times 2 is 2. x times x is x squared. 
And then, since we're distributing, this x is going to both. x times 1 is just 1x, or x. Have to distribute the negative 4 now. So we have negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And once you do that, just combine like terms, and we only have these two in the middle. So our answer, that can't be combined with anything, because this has an x squared, this doesn't. So it's going to be 2x squared, 8x minus 8x is minus 7x, and then minus 4 follows, because there are no other like terms with the 4, the constant. So that's that for that one. Now the reason I don't like to think about foiling when I'm doing these is because it, foil does not work for when you have three terms times two terms, or three terms times three terms. So the best way to do it is just distribute the first term and then distribute the second term. So we're distributing the x. The x is going to go to all three of these guys. Then you multiply it out. So we have x times x squared is x cubed. x times x is x squared. And then x times 1 is x. And you just add them together. You multiply, then you add. Then you multiply, and then you add. Then you multiply again. Now we have to distribute the negative 1. So we have negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Since it's just a negative 1, all you're going to be doing is flipping the sign. Negative 1 times x is minus x, and negative 1 times 1 is minus 1. From here, we can add like terms. So anything with the same letters and the same exponent are like terms. We have no more x cubed, so that's just going to drop down. x cubed. We have x squared minus x squared, so those go together x squared minus x squared, that's 0x squared, so those are going to cancel. And then we have x minus x, those also cancel. Alright? Uh, the minus 1 stays because there's nothing else we can do with that. So we stop there. And that's all I have for today.